Welcome to our online Harvest Festival service. Whilst the way we're celebrating harvest this year may be very different to how we've done it in previous years, with some of you at home watching this um, as a recorded service, some of us in church and some following a paper copy at home. Uh, and the church isn't full of tins of fruit and packages of food to go to the food bank because we're doing a financial collection uh, for their egg fund. But what we're actually celebrating in harvest remains the same. We're giving thanks to God for the abundance of creation, for all the good things we enjoy, all the fruits of the harvest, our food, the amazing produce in our shops. We're also asked to remember through the words of today's collect, that special prayer for today, that the fruits of the creation are to be used for God's glory, for our own well-being and for the relief of those in need. Hence our appeal for our local food bank egg fund. As always, alongside this recorded service, there are some suggestions for music. You will find them either in the email accompanying the link for this service or on our church Facebook page, All Saints Forley. But before we begin, a moment of quiet as we recall God's presence with us and amongst us and as we ask for God's blessing on our worship together. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. And at the start of our service we now move into our prayers of confession. At this harvest time we do come with thankful hearts for all that God has provided for us. So much. We have so many blessings in our daily lives. Our food, our shelter, our water. But we also recognise that we've often wasted these resources of the world and neglected the needs of others. We only have to look around us to see the devastation human beings leave and those who are still hungry and thirsty today. So we come to our time of confession. We confess to you, Lord, our lack of care for the world you have given us resulting in destruction and extinction of species. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, our selfishness in not sharing the earth's bounty fairly. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, our failure to protect resources for others, human, animal and plant life. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May the almighty and merciful God forgive you all your sins and bring you to a new understanding of life on earth and our place in its care. Amen. The Collecton readings are those set for Harvest Thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 to 18. The people of Israel are blessed with abundance by God. In the midst of all their blessings, they must not forget that it was God who gave these riches to them. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill, 
and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock, and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestor did not know, to humble you and test you, and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, My power and the might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore with your ancestors, as he is doing today. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel set for today is from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 16 to 30. Jesus warns against hoarding and being over-anxious about things. God will provide for our needs. Then Jesus told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, What should I do? For I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, I'll do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones. And there I will store my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? For so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. His disi- Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouses nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, How much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you have to eat and what you are to drink, and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today, instead of a sermon or a homily, we're going to do something a bit different, a short guided reflection on creation. But first of all, take time to be comfortable, to put down anything on your lap, obviously apart from your uh, laptop or maybe your phone if you're listening to this on a phone. Make sure your back is against the chair and your feet are firmly on the ground. Now turn your focus to the God of creation. 
Become aware that you are a beloved child of God, sitting under the gaze of the Creator's love. Start by relaxing your neck and shoulders, your arms and hands, your legs and feet. Feel the chair against your back and gently breathe in and out, in and out and let your breath slow to its own natural rhythm. Breathe gently for you are breathing in the love of God and breathing out all that harms and distracts you. And as we begin, look around you as if seeing for the first time all the shapes and colours around you. Wherever you are or maybe through the window, Listen as if listening for the first time. All the sounds around you, what do you hear? And now take flight in your imagination. Allow yourself to be drawn to a time and a place where you've recently encountered beauty and joy in creation. It may be your garden, the beach, somewhere in the forest or somewhere further afield where, which you've visited in the past. Picture it in your mind. Engage all your senses. What are the shapes and colours sounds, smells, tastes and sensations that you experience in this place. Take time to remember a place where you have recently encountered beauty and joy in creation. And give thanks for this place and all that you remember and all that you experienced. And now take time to think about and remember a place where you've recently encountered ugliness and sadness in creation. It may be the sight of lots of plastic on the beaches at the end of a hot summer's day. It might be fly tipping or a report about the extinction of a particular animal or threats to human or plant or sea life, something further afield, something where you have seen the negative impact of human beings in creation. Engage all your senses. What are the shapes and colours, sounds, smells, sensations, feelings you experience as you remember this place?
Take a moment now to share your sadness at what you remember with God. Share your feelings of what it does to you. It might make you angry. It might make you incredibly sad. It might make you more determined to, to do something. Share your thoughts and feelings with the Lord now. And so we come to, in a sense, the so what part of any reflection or sermon. What is God inviting us to do now? How is it God inviting us to respond? As we think of the beautiful places in our world, how might we better take care of creation? When we think of those places which cause us sadness, the places which have been made ugly by human activity, how might we respond to the cry of the poor, the cry of the land, the cry of those affected by human destruction and devastation? So as we give thanks and as we grieve today, we ask God to show us what we can do, however small, to show greater appreciation and greater care for this amazing planet which we call home. And we move now into a time of prayer led by Anne. Thank you, Lord, for the beauty of our world, for the sky and the sea, for the countryside and the city, and for all that we enjoy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for our food, for all that grows, for farms, for allotments, for gardens, for the variety that we enjoy, for the colours and the textures and the tastes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all those who manufacture our food, those who process it, those who pack it, and all those in the shops who sell it to us. We have such an abundance, we must not take it for granted. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all those who catch our fish, all those who transport it through seas, sometimes with danger. Thank you, too, for all who transport our food by air, by lorry, by train, all those who work in the terminals at the docks. Thank you for them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And as we thank you for all that you've given us, we pray that you will help us to share, to share your bounty with others and to be careful with our waste. We pray for the work of the food bank, especially our local one in Blackfield. We pray for all those who work there and all those who are generous in their donations. 
and we ask your blessing particularly on the egg appeal at this time of harvest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in need today, those who need our food banks all over the country and here in Blackfield, or those all over the world who will be hungry or thirsty today, those whose crops have failed, who cannot feed their families, and we pray for all those who bring relief to them. And we bring to God any others in need today known to us as we hold them before him in our hearts. And we end with the Lord's Prayer, whichever version you prefer. Amen. Amen. And the blessing. May God our Creator, who clothes the lilies and feeds the birds of the air, give you grace to care for his creation, inspire you to hear the cry of the poor, and to work for justice and peace. And the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer and Life-Giver, remain with you this day and always. Amen.